Uh, next, uh, I would ask if Commissioner Jarvis would read us uh, or, or read our um, ethics awareness and conflict of interest reminder statement. Pursuant to GS 153A-44, a commissioner has a duty to vote on matters coming before the board, but may be excused from voting on issues involving the commissioner's own financial interest, official conduct, or on matters on which the commissioner is prohibited from voting under GS 14-234. 153A-340G or 160A-3 Division 3 of the Currituck County Code of Ordinance. It is the duty of every commissioner to avoid, avoid both the conflicts of interest and the appearances of conflict. Does any commissioner have any known conflict of interest or appearance of conflict with respect to matters coming before the Board of Commissioners in this meeting? If so, please identify the conflict or the appearance of conflict. Okay, seeing no uh, issues raised, uh, the next item is the approval agenda. Do we have any changes to the agenda this evening? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to pull uh, dum -dum -dum. Uh, number four out of the consent agenda, and uh, I'd like to bring that out for uh, discussion part of voting. Okay, can we, uh, would you be okay if as we start the consent agenda to go ahead and pull it out first thing and discuss it then? Please. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other adjustments to the amendment? You need a second for that? Yeah, they'll I'll need a, a motion. I'll second. Second. It. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And before we get into public comment, I just wanted to let the audience know you probably see a new face up here. Um, our new county attorney, um, Megan Morgan, is her first day today. <clears throat> and she's had some like, uh, exciting experiences first day so far. Um, it's memorable. So we do want to welcome her here, first day today starting, and her first meeting with us. So we look forward to many, many more with you there. So thank you, thank you for, for coming on board. Yes, I'm forward to it as well. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, the next item is our public comment. This is a time for citizens or anyone who wants to come before the board and um, uh, Talk about anything you want. Um, we have um, three minutes. Uh, when you get up here, please state your name and address for the record. And you'll see the green light start uh, when you get to the podium. When you get about 30 seconds, you'll see the light, the yellow light come on. And then when the red light um, comes up, please try to wrap up your thoughts, your statement. And we'll keep moving along. Again, you can discuss anything. The board will listen intently. And you will have our utmost attention. And the first person we have signed up is Caden Lowe. Good evening. My name is Caden Lowe, and I reside at 619 Idlet Road in Idlet. I'm here tonight representing Currituck County 4-H. First and most importantly, I would like to thank you all for your support of the 4-H program here in Currituck. This organization has given me the opportunity to learn skills that will benefit me for my entire life. I've had the opportunity to travel across the country representing Currituck County at various speaking competitions, I participated in numerous leadership events and have networked with individuals across the country that will benefit me in my future endeavors, such as college and future employment. These opportunities would not exist without your support, and I hope you realize how important these opportunities are to young people like myself. Secondly, I'm excited that I will have the opportunity to interact with some of you during the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners meeting held next weekend. This year, I will be serving as Curry Tuck County's delegate to this event, which is designed to increase youth involvement in county governments by helping us learn what county governments do and the role of commissioners. As the Curry Tuck County Youth Delegate, I look forward to participating in the activities and to share the, that information with other Curry Tuck youth when I return. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Lowe, and we will be well represented up there. We're glad you can come for us. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, the next individual we have signed up is, looks like Matt Crook and Kevin Thornton. Again, just state your name and address for the record, please. Hello. My name is Matt Crook. This is Kevin Thornton. We're from Leeward Renewable Energy, um, address 811 Louisiana Avenue, Houston, Texas. Um, 
I'm the project developer for the Oak Trail project. Um, I was here maybe two years ago um, seeking the use permit for Oak Trail and just wanted to give a, a brief construction update for folks. Um, you probably have seen some activity happening down Pudding Ridge Road. We're getting, we're, we're moving on, we're getting our project trailer set up and things like that. We'll start doing our civil work. Uh, modules will start getting shipped in around late fall, November timeframe. Um, and work will kind of commence through the winter and we should be testing and commissioning next spring. So our, our goal there is May of 2023, um, having commissioning done. Um, so just to let you all know, that's when we're installing panels. It's kind of the late winter timeframe. All the earth rating, everything like that should be done before um, and then all the panels will be installed through, throughout the winter. If there's any questions or concerns for the public, we do have a website. It's www.oaktrailsolar.com. Um, that's where you can learn more about the project, more about Leeward Renewable Energy. There's also a hotline phone number there, an email address. If anybody has any questions or concerns, they can reach out to us through that website. Um, but yep, just wanted to give you all a heads up and um, you know, we're, we're, we're excited to be engaged here in Curtuck County. Um, Kevin, with Public Affairs, we're, we're kind of meeting with some folks while we're here um, for the next day or two. Um, so if there's anybody that wants to come and talk to us or meet with us, you can feel free to send them our way. I have dinner tomorrow night. Juanita Krauss was supposed to be with us from the chamber, but she's got COVID. So if anybody wants to go out to dinner tomorrow night, let us know. I got a <laughs> also, we're, you know, we're, we're going to continue our community involvement activities. And so we'll be looking for the right strategic, you know, the right places for us to, to be involved. Sure. And thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. I have no one else signed up under public comment. Is there anyone that showed up late? They didn't get a chance to sign up that would like to address the board on anything? Okay. Uh, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment portion of the meeting and move on to the commissioner's report. And this evening, I'll start off to my left with uh, Commissioner Selena Jarvis. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> First, I want to say thank you to the board for allowing Kitty and I to attend the uh, wonderful opportunity at the National Association of Counties. Uh, their annual conference in Aurora, Colorado last week. Um, it was an arduous ordeal getting there, um, just like everyone who's traveled in the last two years knows. But once we got there, it was a very informative and a very busy conference. Um, we attended so many sessions. We attended one on elections. Uh, we attended one on emergency management responses uh, and the opioid settlement, just to name a few. But the most uh, interesting uh, speaker that I heard was at our closing ceremonies, uh, a gentleman by the name of Mick Elbing. Elbling. Um, he runs a company called Not Impossible. And it's incredible what he and his organization have, has done. He started off and he and his company created a, a, a tool called the iRider that allows ALS patients to communicate uh, as well as paint and do artistic activities um, and he did that for a cost of a hundred dollars per ALS patient. Uh, another one of his endeavors, uh, he went to Sudan after seeing a video about so many young people losing uh, their arms and legs from the bombing that the hostile government is doing. He went there and with a 3D printer has changed the dynamics of that community by creating 3D prosthetics uh, for about $1,000 each. And lastly, and most interesting to me, um, he is now working on a, um, an apparatus uh, to help Parkinson's patients um, stop the tremors. And as, as someone who has a family member who is suffering from Parkinson's, it gave me such hope. And I came away from his message just energized. Uh, his energy, his optimism, his determination to solve problems that people told him that were impossible, 
Uh, it's a perfect name called Not Possible. And so along that vein, I know many people know that the speed limit has changed uh, from 55 to 45 for about the last two miles of southern Currituck. Um, it is a start, but it is not enough. Every day, citizens who live in and around Edgewater Road take their lives into their hands simply from running an errand. And we have got to keep fighting. It is possible, it is not impossible to get DOT to act. So I encourage every one of my neighbors to continue flooding their site every time you have a near miss, every time you see something, go there and make it possible to make our intersection and our community much safer. And I want to welcome my former student, um, who I am so proud of, Megan Morgan, as our, uh, our new uh, attorney, and I hope it will be a perfect fit for you. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Jarvis. I'll just go ahead and um, uh, piggyback a little bit on the roads out there. Um, have you noticed out there that DOT does have those um, those hoses across the highway to help them do some studies throughout the county? And you might notice, too, that on South Mills Road, there's a stoplight now getting ready to um, start up there. They've got done hanging it, so you'll see that up in the Moyoc area. Of course, the 45-mile-an-hour speed limit sign, I've... I had people riding my bumper and get beside me and give me looks, and I just kind of flashed 45, 45, slow down. And then I look for the nearest deputy alongside the road so I can flag them over to get them. So, just yeah, just call <laughs> Kevin. But, um, you know, there, there looks like they're doing some studies, the speed limit sign, and I just wanted to thank the uh, the sheriff's department, the deputies out there patrolling. Um, it's a hard job out there, especially when we have the new speed limits and the tourists, but I see you guys working hard out there. and. I just want to thank the Sheriff's Department um, for the hard work. I know it's hot out there. Believe me, I know it's hot out there. Um, I'm in it too most of the time. But um, just be careful on the roads. Obey the speed limit sign. It was put down there to try to save lives. And, and um, I hope everybody knows there's plenty of signs up there. You can't miss the 45 mile an hour signs. They're all over the place. Um, and just remember your first responders, um, dispatchers, everybody out there in this heat. Um, when they're out there, it's hot out there. And bring them a bottle of water, support, whatever. And um, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Beaumont, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I uh, have the pleasure of serving Curta County on the Fire EMS Board. Um, the purpose of that board is to try and advise the Board of Commissioners as to the issues facing Fire EMS and how the county may engage or um, you know, best align ourselves with what the needs are of the community. Um, for those that don't know, we had a very significant fire in Kerala this, uh, I believe it was early Friday morning. And um, <clears throat> several things went in the county's way uh, associated with that. Uh, we had a unit that had been responding to a, a false alarm that happened to be all geared up, headed back, smelled smoke, saw the glow, and then the alarm went off. So they actually were already headed that way uh, when the call out occurred. Um, thankfully, only uh, all 35 residents in the apartment were evacuated uh, without injury uh, in time. Um, the building was sprinkled, which helped, but the fire got into the attic and went all the way down the building, and the entire building was lost. So that's what went, that is what went right. Unfortunately, the other things that didn't go so right, not the least of which is a fire hydrant that was across the street, was not functioning appropriately. That was noted in early February. It was reported to uh, the Water Department in the end of February. It was reported to the FIAB in March. That fire hydrant is still not functioning correctly. Had that fire hydrant been necessary, that's a resource that we would not have had. Thankfully, we did not run out of, wire on, of water on the scene and that was avoided. The challenge comes with, um, and it's kind of along the lines of, you know, uh, making it possible, right? I, we as the county commissioners, uh, believe it or not, try to do what's in the best interest of this county with every decision we make. Um, normally there's folks that like it, there's folks that don't like it, 
But trust me when I say every single commissioner up here is doing the best job that they can for our community. What is frustrating at times is when we move at the speed of government, which I don't think anyone would argue that government moves quickly. Um, continuing along those lines, and specifically, is the Mariner's Museum. Um, that was a $5 million investment that was just oct tax. <coughs> it was used to build it. You know, it's just occupancy tax. Since March, in fact, I, after it opened, that facility has only been open Monday through Friday from 10 until 4, Monday through Friday. Um, closed on Saturday and Sunday. Meanwhile, the Food Lion parking lot is increasingly packed, as many of the deputies in the back will attest to, as well as the Harris Teeters. People have gotten the message that rather than spend two hours coming through Southern Shores and duck, get to Currituck County a little early and hang out and have a relaxing time prior to checking in. We have not embraced what's going on right now. We have a, a wonderful facility that's been created that, let me mention, most folks in Currituck work Monday through Friday. Um, we have a facility that I can never go visit because the only time I can get to the Outer Banks is on the weekend. So we need to make it possible. It may be difficult. It may be hard. It may be, you know, arduous on, on some fronts. But the bottom line is until we adopt a mentality of let's make it happen, you know, we're never going to get any further. We're never going to get to where we need to be as a county. And I have high hopes with our ability to improve throughout the spectrum. But the bottom line is and an inherent problem with government is – and this doesn't work in the, in the big business. It doesn't work in, in corporate America, right? We don't have to make a profit in Kirtuck County, right? If we make bad decisions, if we do things poorly, what's our fallback position? But we either cut things out of the budget or we raise taxes. We have got to adopt a better mentality of stewardship over the taxes that every single resident of this county, every single visitor spends. We have got to do a better job. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. And just one update. I think as far as the fire hydrant goes, it was functioning, correct? It was just they're going to do a flow test to see if yes, how actually, much water is coming when, out of it? When I heard about uh, the hydrant claim this morning, I uh, asked the water department if they would look into it. They sent uh, staff out to test the uh, fire hydrant. What they found, they reported back to me. The hydrant flows, but, but the nut will spin free when you try to open it. What that means is it will spin as many times as you turn the valve, but it is operational, has flow, and will open and close. Um, then, the, then there was a statement that, well, it wasn't flowing sufficiently, and so tomorrow there's plan for a flow test to see exactly how much water is coming out of that hydrant. So to that end, a fire pump needs water pressure, mm -hmm. and it needs water flow, mm -hmm. or the pump cavitates. To suggest that we're getting water out of the hydrant, the very next call, sh in my opinion, right? Because this is safety, okay? We're not talking about, uh, you know, a text amendment or we're not talking about a building permit. We're talking about public safety. Somewhere in there are, uh, and I don't care where the department is or what specific department is involved, but if there's an expert that's reporting there's a problem, it's somewhere in there we have a civic responsibility. In fact, I would suggest to you it's an ethical decision or an ethical policy that we track down the expert and get the, you know, you say this is broken. Why are you saying it's broken? That should have been like the very next phone call. Well, and I also want to track down and see what was reported to the water department in February. I've not seen in the list of hydrants sent to me at least in April and May that included the Caroline Court. It did. It I, absolutely well, did. And that's, the, and that's what I reported. I'm saying the list that I received yes, and it was reported back to me when I asked the Water Department to look into those back in April. They sent me back that list and told me what had been done to repair at least the list that I saw. But I will be going back to see what indeed they had in hand in February. That, that has been on the list since February. Thank you, Mr. All right. Thank you. 
Vice Chairman and uh, Commissioner McCord. Um, first off, I like I don't know if the TV was playing, and I don't even know if anybody's watching this, but they might watch it on YouTube. Um, we did do a moment of silence for Ernie Bowden, uh, previous commissioner. Uh, Ernie was an icon, a legend, a celebrity, whatever you want to say, in the Corova area. Uh, prayers to him and his family. Uh, if you knew Ernie or if you ever met Ernie, Ernie was Ernie was a character. Um, so, like I said, I just in case I don't think with the the uh, power going out, I don't know if that was recorded. Um, prayers to uh, Owen. He's still healing. He's doing better. Kitty's husband. I hope he gets better. Where he, and that's why she's not here. And uh, uh, Commissioner White's sick. Uh, welcome, Megan. I'm going to try to do like speed cliff notes version, and I'm just going to x everything that I put down here. There's 24 signs on the south end of the county that say 45 miles an hour in that 3.5 mile radius there's 24 i counted them i wrote it I stopped cars in it um so if you don't get it you don't see it uh you're you know you probably shouldn't have a driver's license but um there is 24 uh speed limit signs down there on the south end that's a new change it's not a speed trap it was done because there's been some bad accidents there the water park is extremely busy i visited for the first time two weeks ago uh for a birthday party um, and uh, the place is awesome. Um, I'm thankful that we have that. Um, you know, we Dare County doesn't have one. So, um, like I said, uh, our water park and just we have a lot of great things to be thankful here. Don't believe the media all the time. Don't believe social media all the time because if you go on some of the different pages, all you see is complaints about somebody parking here or somebody doing this. We have a lot of good things here in the county that I'm thankful for. August is post a positive message on social media on Facebook. I don't know if anybody knew that, but August is post a positive message on social media. I kind of made that up tonight. So, um, But feel free on the Mayock page or some of the other ones because you'll see some great stuff, people complaining about wanting a grocery store, and then we're in the process of meeting with somebody and doing a commercial project, and then they don't want the grocery store. So, But people like to complain buddy so that's that's like you said you got thick skin to do this job and many other jobs um the fire in Kerala, like uh commissioner beaumont payment said the fire department guys did a great job i mean the the building the the fire the second and third floors were not taken out of the three floor uh unit um which occupied 35 people i believe that were displaced um they did a really really good job um you know saving a lot of people's stuff i mean when you have a fire you lose everything it's pretty pretty but like i said I'll, kudos to not just our paid fire but our volunteer fire uh department guys and that i witnessed this i had to go over there for something to help uh for the sheriff's office and i witnessed the the two of the paid and the volunteer they work really good together um and that's something that we have and you don't have that in a lot of places if you have paid or volunteer but those guys did really good any of them that was there and i'm not going to name names because i'll forget some so but good job to them um this weekend was the peach festival last weekend i attended that that was heavily attended uh in knots island when knots island has a festival it's usually pretty busy so uh good job they ran out of peaches both days um that i mean because it was busy so um a lot of events this month curry tuck kids i know you're the uh on that board but i didn't mean to steal your thunder but uh, Curry Tech Kids has an event on August 6th from 11 to, to 1. Uh, it's all over social media. I believe it's at the YMCA, but don't hold me to that. It it's is. from 11 to it 1. Is. It is. Uh, and the sheriff's office will be breaking out our new bounce house that we, that we got from. Um, so, like I said, the, um, also that same day, I think this is going to be a big event, event as well. Um, the Curry Tech Trading Post, which is owned by Tim Posh, formerly Rouse, formerly Curry Tech Sports 2, um, they have the first annual Floatopia. So bring a raft. You can float, whatever. Um, he doesn't have a big parking lot. I talked to Tim today, and he got with Sybil uh, O'Neill, who owns property by there, and they're going to let people park there and all that good stuff. So nobody's going to have to walk across the road because somebody would get hit on a Saturday probably, and that would be dangerous. So um, that Saturday from 11 to 7, he has live bands, all kinds of stuff. So I wanted to advertise that. Um, August 13th, there's a car show in Pasquotank. It's not in our county, but the, it's a deputy um, that works in Pasquotank that has a, a severe medical condition. It's a fundraiser for him. And I know the sheriff's office, we're participating to support that family. And his wife actually teaches here in the county at Mayotte Middle. She might not teach, but she works in the – she works for Mayotte Middle. We'll just say that. Um, and I don't want to put out names just to – so. Um, Fire and EMS, I already said it, the volunteer fire department, our law enforcement. We received complaints 
we receive them as commissioners. I receive them in my other capacity at the sheriff's office. Um, you know, the guys are out there working. I mean, they're working hard. Uh, dispatch works super hard. EMS, fire. I mean, we have really, it, we live in a great place. And I've said it, and I love saying this. this is my favorite statement. If you don't like it here, put your house up for sale because the housing market's good still. Not as good as it was a few months ago, but you could always move. And you, I guarantee you'll get a bigger tax rate than you got here and the services. So um, that's for the naysayers that like to complain sometimes. Um, and I do one thing, um, and, and everybody said it up here about the speed and all that stuff, the deputies. Um, and I'm not, this is not taking a shot. I, uh, our first sergeant, uh, Trooper Edwin Forbes, great guy, does a really, really good job. They don't have a lot of troopers, so I challenge our governor, Roy Cooper, to get us some troopers over here in the Curry Tuck County. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to work. Great restaurants, great everything. So um, I challenge Roy Cooper. I doubt he's watching this, but... Um, uh, get us some troopers to, to help. Like I said, we do as much as we can do. Um, you know, we do everything but enforce OSHA OSHA laws and other stuff. So I actually took an animal control call the other day to help them. But like I said, it's a great place to live. Don't always believe the media. Um, in our audience tonight, uh, Sean Jennings, Region Rents. I'm going to hit him up for December 2nd is the Christmas parade. I'm in charge of that. I got a message the other day. He's so kind. Uh, gave us his company, gave us a, a rent one. And then he gave us uh, additional um, um, light trailers. So I'm going to hit you up for that again. So I might as well get you on the spot, but I appreciate it. Um, like I said, that's pretty much it for me. School starts Thursday at NAP. So when you ride through that school zone at NAP and you see those lights flashing, it's not a mistake. And you might see some additional lights flashing if you ride through it, and they'll probably be blue. So um, make sure you're aware of your surroundings. I think I got it all. So thank you. Uh, Commissioner McCord, could you just check the list, make sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. You got everything, no, correct? Just exiting it off, left okay. and right. <laughs> Wanted to make sure. All right, thank you. Um, that takes care of our commissioner reports. <laughs> um, next is our county manager's report. Um, Mr. Chairman, just want to re remind the board and the public that the Travel and Tourism Department will be holding uh, several public meetings in the next two months with regard to the development and design of the Curry Tuck Jack um, statue that's john jasper white who was also known as curry tuck jack who was a an enslaved sailor during the revolutionary war um, tamron coogler the travel tourism department director reported to you i believe it's your last meeting about the county's receipt of a z smith reynolds grant for pre-planning uh, of a statue uh, so the first meeting will be next monday from 6 p.m to 8 p.m at corinth baptist church in jarvisburg right next to the, Jar uh, the uh, jarvisburg colored school um, and then there will be uh, two other meetings in September. All that is posted on the county's Facebook page and its website. Uh, for those citizens who are interested in attending, they're asked to RSVP, uh, as indicated on the, uh, the two sites, in order that folks can prepare for uh, their presence. There will be food and child care provided during those meetings. Uh, secondly, just ask for some um, understanding with the Kerala staff, we had a lightning strike uh, over the weekend at the Kerala satellite office, I guess much like we just about did here. Yeah. It burned up a lot of the electronic equipment in the office, including computers, uh, telephones, copy machine. Uh, so uh, Logan Steese, our, uh, our um, IT director, spent the day in Kerala trying to put all that back together and understand what all had, has been damaged. Um, I do understand this afternoon that at least one of the building inspectors found that his telephone and computer were still working and we'll be delivering some other equipment uh, tomorrow in order to get that office back up to speed. Uh, and then lastly, I too would like to welcome uh, Megan as county attorney. Um, over three decades ago, I started here and worked with her mother, who was a deputy uh, clerk of court in juvenile matters. And so now I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to work with her daughter, Megan. So. <laughs> Welcome. Paul had Mr. Okay. Well, <clears throat> it's nice to be able to break this out separately now. So um, next on the agenda is the county attorney's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, today was my first day. As you said, it was a great first day. I was welcomed by so many kind, wonderful people that work for this wonderful county. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, to work alongside of you all and for this county. Today was a crazy, hectic day, and I met with 
county manager for quite a while. We went over a lot of the pending litigation that I will be involved in and a lot of the matters that are just going on. So I have a lot of things to get up to speed on, which I will do. And the end of the month, I've been signed up to attend the county attorney's conference at Wrightsville Beach, which I'm really looking forward to, sponsored by the School of Government. So again, thank you for having me, and I'm really looking forward to serving as your county attorney. Thank you, Megan. Okay, the next uh, item on the agenda is our administrative reports. Um, and tonight we have um, the honor of recognizing an individual that uh, went uh, well beyond the call of duty. Uh, Life-saving award presentation to Corporal Jeremy Evans, and I believe uh, Captain McCord's going to uh, Commissioner McCord is going to do the honors this evening. Um, before I call Jeremy up, I want to just say one thing, um, Corporal Evans. Uh, he's one of I believe we have twelve that are um, certified EMTs that are deputies out of seventy. We have twelve that are your brother-in-law's one. Um, and like I said, just to speak for for Jeremy, that is a brutal course. Um, it is very brutal. I actually attended it, and I didn't finish it. So um, I was passing at the end, but I did not finish it uh, due to time restraints of riding time. And it was during COVID for my defense, but that was a brutal course. I would probably never sign up for that again. I would sign up to, for a UFC fight probably before that. It was very brutal. Um, but just to credit uh, Corporal Evans on how great of a guy he is, a deputy, you have the sheriff here, the chief deputy, one of our captains. A lieutenant but I'm here on a different capacity um, sergeant Taylor is here as well I mean just that just shows how good of a guy he is not just he's a good guy and they're here to support him so I just wanted to, to note that but if you would I'm gonna call him up and I guess we'll stand out here so I can read this and his wife can come up too and the sheriff if you want to come up or anything or we come up and take a picture at the end if you want to do that okay. um, do you want us to come up with this? Or yeah, 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 come on. Come on. Okay, okay. let's surround the movie. Uh, and the family of this incident is here as well. Uh, and they can get a photo of All right, uh, basically, this uh, this resolution of, is uh, of the Greta County Board of Commissioners in appreciation for the service for Corporal Jeremy Evans to the citizens of Greta County, North Carolina. Whereas on May 23rd, 2022, Greta County Sheriff's Court. Frederick County Sheriff Corporal Jeremy Evans responded to an automobile accident at House Point, North Carolina, where he found an occupant of the automobile suffering from a life threatening injuries. And whereas Corporal Evans forced his way into the damaged automobile to reach and render life saving aid to the injured person until relieved by emergency medical services personnel. Corporal Evans' immediate and selfless life saving actions to another is credit to him and the Frederick County Sheriff's. Office for which the citizens of Curry County are grateful for. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Curry County Board of Commissioners, on behalf of the citizens of Curry County, acknowledges the life saving actions of Corporal Evans and extends an appreciation for his dedicated public service. Adopted August 1st, 2020.
Let me just say, Currituck County has a lot of great people in our county um, working for us, living in the county, um, helping each other out. And it just shows the commitment that we have with our sheriff's department and all our employees and citizens. It's just, um, you know, it's just, um, I know there's a lot of people that do a lot of good things, but to be able to recognize somebody for something like this is, is just a great, great honor. Thank you again. <clears throat> okay, um, the next item. Um, we got, yeah, we'll give a few minutes so anybody can hear that. <clears throat> Sean, you have, Sean, you have to stay. <laughs> okay, gosh. Right up the road. Man, our audience is... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, you only live a half a mile. <laughs> Thank you all. See you later. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, our next item is going to be, um, yeah. <laughs> now we have nobody in the audience. <laughs> we uh, the pu public hearing. Um, item A is the public hearing pursuit to uh, NC General Statute Section 158-7.1 on proposed conveyance of a fee, simple interest for lots 8, 9, and 10 at Maple Commerce Park as shown on a plat recorded at map book N, page 2 of the Currituck County Registry, and I believe we'll turn this over to our county manager. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, you and, and uh, Airport Director William Nelson and I met recently with representatives of Lynn Van Lorette, LLC, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, who expressed an interest and intent on acquiring lots 8, 9, and 10 in the Maple Commerce Park. Uh, their interest and desire is to attempt to bring some type of aeronautical-related business uh, to the county to locate on those lots to that end. Uh, they have recently met uh, last Friday with Airport Director William Nelson to discuss um, some ideas and thoughts he has about bringing some some type of aeronautical related uh, facility here uh, and also including uh, some type of maintenance facility who have been communicating with the airport director about possibly locating here as well. Uh, th this uh, public hearing tonight is required by general statute when the county intends to convey property for economic development purposes uh, to hear the views of the community with regard to the proposed conveyance. Uh, as set forth before you, this resolution would provide that uh, the county authorizes the sale of lots 8, 9, and 10, the execution of relevant sale documents upon the approval of a purchase and sale agreement by the Currituck County Board of Commissioners. So that will be coming to you subsequent uh, to this resolution, but this is the first uh, required step. Uh, the, uh, the assessed tax value and what would be the estimated sales price, as has been consistent with the county's practice in the past, uh, would be a sale price for all three lots in the amount of $760,000 uh, at closing. Um, I think staff recommends that the board adopt this resolution and we'll proceed to, to further negotiation with the intended purchaser uh, with a purchase and sale agreement to bring that back to the board for approval at a future meeting. Board have any questions this time? <clears throat> I, I do. Okay. Um, so, what is he allowed to do if once this is approved or if this is approved? I.e., um, you know, airport property is some of the most valuable in a county. Typically, yes. um, in fact, that that's almost universally held. Um, this has, if I understand correctly, the lots associated with it. This is going to have direct access to the taxiways, to the runway facility. It, it will require an easement across a, a, a lot that the county will retain at this point, lot 11, but yes. Correct. Understood. Um, my concern is uh, and a, a, a widget company decides that they want to put in a widget facility or, or that's who, who we wind up developing one of these lots for. Uh, is that what's the check and balance to ensure that the, it's the best use of this property relative to the airport? Well, first of all, the county does have restrictive covenants on all the lots in the Commerce Park. Uh, so there are certain uses that are permitted, some that are outright not permitted uh, within the park. Um, there's also a provision or requirement in the restrictive covenants uh, that within a certain number of years, I can't remember exactly the number of years, that the property has to be developed. 
or uh, the owner would, is required to reconvey the property to the county. But it, is there any requirement that it be aviation-oriented? Oh, no, there's no requirement. We have a, a list of different types of uses uh, that may be located in the Commerce Park under the restrictive covenants. Any other questions? More? No? Okay, uh, at this time, motion. what's that? Oh, no, I just said I was going to just make a motion. Okay, now at this time, I'll go ahead and open up the public hearing um, uh, for, uh, for this resolution. And I have no one signed up for the public hearing. Anyone in the audience that <laughs> you have no one in the audience? <laughs> no, you have staff. <laughs> well, we have we have somebody no, back okay. there that would like to speak and get you to sign up. Okay, seeing now, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing portion of this, and we do have to take action on this resolution. So I'll ask the board then for um, a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, move to approve. I'll second it. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, motion curious. Thank you. All right, the next item under new business is item A, ordinance amending section 10-64 of the Currituck County Code of Ordinances providing for uh, issuance of user, user permits to county residents and property owners for the operation of utility terrain vehicles on the beach, I believe... County manager? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this night I was previously before the board at which time the language was adopted that would actually prohibit even county residents and property owners from, from operating a utility terrain or UTV side by side vehicle on county beaches. Um, the chair didn't begin to ask some questions about it because there had been the issue with ATV permits to county residents and property owners who own UTV. So this is a clarifying amendment. This is a clarifying amendment to add UTVs uh, as those types of vehicles that may be permitted for operation by county residents and property owners uh, on the county beaches. And my understanding is that because of the shortage of commissioners, it would not pass tonight unanimously. Is that I'm sorry, that's correct. At its first reading, an ordinance requires unanimous uh, vote to adopt it so it would come back to you at your August 15th meeting at which time it may be adopted by a simple majority vote okay any questions I just would like to bring up I know we have with this as well as a couple other little things something probably in the fall when we come into next year where we need to be a little more and I'm not this is not you know there's Health always a little more all, prepared yeah. oh there's so many different changes of this and that and that's when we went with the you know the the parking passes and tried to you know so like i said i just this one I, I got a list of them so um but like i said we can discuss that in the fall in the winter at the retreat possibly and have have our ducks in a row for 2023 well, in prior years we've had to actually debrief the end of the summer with uh, the sheriff's office so it'd be helpful to do that sort i get the right phone calls and the emails yeah. <laughs> okay any further discussions if not, I uh, have some board for uh, action on this and put on a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion for approval. I'll second it, I guess. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. It doesn't. No, it doesn't carry. Oh, it, well, oh, yeah. I mean, it carries tonight. Oh, it carries not. tonight, but not for unanimously. And so, so it is not adopted. But it's not you, adopted, it has but passed it passed tonight, reading. but didn't get adopted yeah. tonight. Okay, let me clarify that. Now, you passed tonight, but didn't get adopted. So we did pass. I know it is. It's been terrible. Um, uh, new business under item B: um, ordinance amending the code of ordin yeah, ordinances by. I'm put my glasses on. By adding section 12-70, providing for the penalty of, for operating golf carts on public streets and roads in violation of Chapter 12, Article 5 of the Code of Ordinances. And I believe this is going to follow the same guidelines. I'll turn it over to the county manager. Uh, this is before you tonight, but at your last meeting, I, uh, some of the commissioners were talking about concern with regard to operation. operation of golf carts, um, but, but, yeah, <laughs> particularly in Kerala. Um, so uh, I talk, spoke with the sheriff about it. The sheriff's concern was that the ordinance did not have within its body the what the violation is. 
what has been the long-standing practice of a lot of counties and cities in the state is and it is with our ordinance there is chapter one which sets forth uh, the general penalty for violating county ordinances the general assembly however has seen differently and so has our courts which recently the general assembly amended uh, statutes and then the courts uh, recently and the court of appeals determined that an individual could not be held liable for violating a county ordinance uh, because the penalty provision was not contained specifically within that section of the ordinance. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, and so that's the purpose for this ordinance amendment is to specifically provide for the penalty within the section applicable to mm -mm -mm. golf carts, and that would then allow for the sheriff to be able to enforce this particular ordinance. It's recommended for your approval. Any questions from the board? This is another one. Like I said, I mean, we could touch up in the winter, but I mean, like I said, there's just just a little bit. It's close. That this is good, but going back to the winter, we need to have a serious discussion about all the other impacts, illegal parking. You know, I mean, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And, yes, and and I I know we also discussed was the potential of having a golf cart permit. Or something to that effect because you can't tell. I will say this I will say this on the golf carts the guy that rents them by food line and I, I and I should have remembered his name because he I, I'm his contact when we talk he, I'm, he does not play when they violate the rules or they do stuff I mean he will they they will pick their stuff up if other businesses or other places where they rented their homes enforce rules and stuff like he did we'd probably have less problems I don't, so I'm surprised they don't flip them more than they do I'm surprised with I've, the it's happened More it's happened do, yeah. so but but along those lines you can't tell easy cart a from easy cart b they just say easy cart because that's who made them so <clears throat> there's no sticker to call the business and yeah there's it. and 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 i understand you, you know what are you going to do um have a golf cart tow truck or something but they're illegally parked at and it's Again, they dump them off. They dump. Them, they, I mean, they've been. Dump, I've seen them dumped at the bike. You know, the bike racks and stuff like that. But like he said, there does need to be something on there. I mean, like if it's a club car or a Yamaha or a whatever it is, an Easy Go. But like you said, it, the they don't have and they don't have to have. I mean, and it could have club car number fifty five or whatever. But I mean, you, you know, you could call that company and say, "Hey, who's you know?" So right now, but there does need to be, like you said, I mean, you can put a permanent sticker on those things. So right now, all this is doing is make it so it can be correct. And yeah, and, and then we can go through exactly. the details. Yes, exactly. so, yes. So okay, um, so I'll ask the board in for a motion on this. I move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Um, you can have it. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the motion passes tonight, but it's not adopted tonight. So, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. The next item is item C, the consent agenda. And I think under the consent agenda, it was asked that we will go ahead and pull this out now and discuss um, the item four, Dune Walkover Replacement Project, change order number two. And I will um, let uh, Mr. Vice Chairman then jump in with any questions. Or, oh, I. Or, or I what, just like. To understand all of the implications as far as what increase what decrease because my observation is neither of them are done yet we're now in august uh coral has got quite a ways to go in looking at in the consent agenda there's a claim that the the sand dune is significantly higher than it was when it was surveyed prior to construction which I am not sure I agree with that at all because I just would like clarification as to what significantly higher means from a contractual perspective because I don't I don't see it and I am there fairly frequently. The way it was described to me by the county engineer is that um, the, the storm in the spring evidently changed the, the the face of that dune such that it's requiring the contractor to purchase uh, pilings that are of greater length than was the design when the project was bid. Um, and so that was a request for that change order. Um, as to Dolphin, um, the hold up there, actually the public's been using it, although it's not open, uh, but th there was a requirement for handrails 
to be installed under the building code, the length of that crosswalk, and those, those were back ordered. They were delivered last week, I understand, and they started the installation on Friday and were to finish the installation of the handrails today. Uh, and I'm told also that tomorrow the water, it's already been connected, but the, 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 the water will be turned on for the showers and the foot wash, and that facility should be complete and, and fully usable by the public. Um, and then, of course, Mackerel, the board, agreed to a delay in that facility until uh, the fall. Okay, so I remember there being, there's penalties for not being done, correct? There are liquidated damages, as I recall, yes. Okay. I mean, I get it by pushing Mackerel. I understand that. But, right. um, and then my next question was... Um, Right. What, what's the next, what's the estimated time or date of completion for coral I, and I the do, commencement of mackerel? I do not know, but I will get that information from the county engineer and report back to the board tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. It says in the agenda packet on page 36 um, that, uh, I just lost it, sorry. The county is already ex executing change order one, which gives time extension of January 6, 2023 to mackerel walkover. Right. Correct. Yeah, that's the mackerel one, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I didn't know if it all, if it doesn't affect all of them? No, 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 that's the third one. We made the decision as a board, rather than get in the middle of number three okay. in the middle of tourist season, let's push it. And then, and then the only other thing I wanted to offer up is we take a lessons learned out of this and figure out so that we understand the ramifications of timing and impact on a project because, you know, it had we, not that we wouldn't have gone forward, but, you know, we're making decisions that are having impact on our visitors and, you know, traditionally construction's done before tourist season starts, well, not... And you'll recall that there are a couple of items here that that occurred. First of all, it was designed and ready for bid, and then the engineer that designed it just you know, proposed some additions that the board wanted to take into consideration, so that delayed the award of the contract. Um, there was also a, d a delay in, in being able to receive construction material, um, so that held them up as well. As I recall, we brought it back to the board to, to let the board understand that do you, as construction commences at, at when we were going to begin, there was going to be a problem with it running into the middle of the tourist season, and the board I, took the position at that time that we were to forward. proceed. Yeah. I, my <coughs> recollection is construction began <coughs> and wasn't moving because, I, again, it was not going quickly. There was right. no sense of urgency. I did not, I mean, there should have been, you know, what do I know? I don't drive pilings for a living. But the point is it didn't it, it became obvious very quickly that we are we're going to blow right through the start of tourist season. And so I guess the lesson learned is we need to preload this a lot further to the in other words we should already be looking at the next phase oh. of this. Oh yes. And moving out. And I agree. Time, yeah. This this was an unusual situation <clears throat> that that we ran into the middle of the tourist season but we it did suggest to the board whether you might want to hold off. And I will tell you that the shower foot wash things, everybody I've talked to, that's guests are ecstatic over the thought of being able to rinse off before beginning the truck back to whatever house they came from. So despite some of the feedback to the contrary we got, mm -hmm. that is not at all. Everybody is so excited to see that. Yeah. So, anyway. Good. All right. Um, I move for approval. Okay. I'll second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes, and I'll ask the board for a motion move to adjourn. For approval on the consent agenda. I did that already. No, we did number four. Oh, number I'm, four, uh, right? I'm sorry. I'll I, second Paul's I'm, motion. Okay, I jumped ahead. And I'll, I'll third to okay. uh, approve number four it, twice. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the, the entire consent agenda. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. The next item 
is a motion for adjournment so for moved. the meeting. And I'll second that. A motion to second. Any further discussion for adjournment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, everyone, oh. for a great meeting. Too At the late. End of the meeting. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs>